Hello! In this video, we are going to prove the following theorem. The limit as x approaches c of x cubed is equal to c cubed. Now, we're really dealing with the limit of a function. Which function exactly? Well, we're going to say the function is the function f from the set of real numbers to the set of real numbers defined by f of x equals x cubed. And really, we want to show that the limit of our function as x approaches c is equal to c cubed. What does that mean? Well, by the epsilon delta definition of the limit of a function, it means the following. It means for every epsilon greater than zero, there exists a delta greater than zero such that for all x in the domain of our function, if 0 is less than the absolute value of x minus c, which is less than delta, then the absolute value of x cubed minus c cubed is less than epsilon. OK, so to prove this, we are going to prove this statement. And since we're trying to prove a statement about all epsilon greater than 0, let's give ourselves an arbitrary epsilon greater than 0. And the goal from here is to find a delta greater than zero that makes this statement turn out true. Well, let's pretend as though we've already figured out what to choose delta to be. And with this choice of delta, we want to show that this statement is true. And since we're trying to prove a statement about all real numbers, let's give ourselves an arbitrary real number called x. And from here, we want to show if this is true, then this is true. So let's suppose that this is true. From here, the whole goal is to show that the absolute value of x cubed minus c cubed is less than epsilon. So let's start out by writing the left-hand side of this inequality. Now, since x cubed minus c cubed is a difference of perfect cubes, we have that x cubed minus c cubed is equal to x minus c times x squared plus xc plus c squared. And if we recall, a property of absolute values tells us we can split this up into absolute value of x minus c times absolute value of x squared plus xc plus c squared. And then, since absolute value of x minus c is less than delta, if we take absolute value of x squared plus xc plus c squared and multiply it on both sides of this inequality, well, since this guy is greater than or equal to zero, the less than will become less than or equal to. So this guy is less than or equal to this guy. And now, by the triangle inequality, we know that the absolute value of this guy is less than or equal to the absolute value of x squared plus xc plus the absolute value of c squared. And since delta is greater than zero, if we multiply delta on both sides of this inequality, the sign of the inequality will remain the same. So this guy is less than or equal to this guy. And let's just take what we have here and factor out an x. And then we can split this guy up into absolute value of x times absolute value of x plus c. And then absolute value of c squared is equal to c squared. OK. So why have we re-expressed this guy into this? Well, because we can use this inequality to bring absolute value of x in terms of delta and absolute value of x plus c in terms of delta. To see how, well, we know that absolute value of x is equal to absolute value of x minus c plus c. By the triangle inequality, this guy is less than or equal to the absolute value of x minus c plus absolute value of c. And we know that absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. 
So this is what we can do with absolute value of x. Similarly, for absolute value of x plus c, we know that absolute value of x plus c is equal to absolute value of x minus c plus 2c. By the triangle inequality, this guy is less than or equal to absolute value of x minus c plus absolute value of 2c. And we know that absolute value of 2c is just going to be equal to 2 times the absolute value of c. And we know that absolute value of x minus c is less than delta. A way in which we could define delta is we can define delta so that delta is the smallest element in a list of positive numbers. So, for example, if we define delta so that delta is less than or equal to 1, well then, delta plus absolute value c must be less than or equal to 1 plus the absolute value c. And delta plus 2 absolute value c is less than or equal to 1 plus 2 absolute value c. So, with the restriction that delta is less than or equal to 1, we have that absolute value of x is less than 1 plus absolute value c, and absolute value of x plus c is less than 1 plus 2 absolute value c. Now, let's go back to what we have up here. We see that we're doing absolute value of x times absolute value of x plus c. And we should expect, if we multiply absolute value of x times absolute value of x plus c, that will be less than 1 plus absolute value of c times 1 plus 2 absolute value of c. And, in fact, that is actually the case. Because there's a fact regarding real numbers which says the following. If we have four real numbers, a, b, c, and d, such that 0 is less than or equal to a is less than b, and 0 is less than or equal to c is less than d, then it is true that a, c is less than b, d. So this fact tells us that this guy times this guy is less than this guy times this guy. So if we apply this inequality, to what we have here. Well, we know if we add c squared on both sides of this inequality, the sign of the inequality will remain the same. And then, if we multiply delta on both sides of this inequality, well, since delta is greater than zero, the sign of the inequality will still remain the same. So this guy, must be strictly less than this guy. Next, let's just multiply these two guys out. We know that we're going to get 1 plus 2 absolute value of c plus absolute value of c plus 2 absolute value of c squared. And combining like terms, we have 2 absolute value of c plus absolute value of c equals 3 absolute value of c. And we know that 2 absolute value of c squared is equal to 2c squared. So really, we have 2c squared plus c squared, which gives us 3c squared. And now, all we're going to do is restrict delta so that delta is less than or equal to epsilon over 1 plus 3 absolute value of c plus 3c squared. If we do that, well, if we take this inequality and multiply this guy on both sides, then the sign of the inequality will remain the same because this guy is positive. And we see that these two guys are going to cancel out, so we're just left with epsilon. So putting this together, we have shown that absolute value of x cubed minus c cubed is less than epsilon, which is exactly what we wanted to show. So really, if we define delta so that delta is the smallest element in the list consisting of 1 and epsilon over 1 plus 3 absolute value c plus 3c squared, then this argument will follow. So now, let's put this all together so that we've made sure that we've proven this entire statement. Well, 
we have shown given any real number x. If this is true, then absolute value of x cubed minus c cubed is less than epsilon. So we have proven precisely this statement. And we have found a delta greater than zero that makes this statement true. Namely, this guy. So we have proven that this statement is true. And we proved that this statement was true under the assumption of some arbitrary epsilon greater than zero. Since epsilon was arbitrary, we were shown for all epsilon greater than zero, this is true. So yeah, we have proven this entire statement, which means we have proven that this is true. So this completes the proof. And so yeah, that's pretty much it for this video.